and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Leona Trundle going to kick off the day today. Today we're going to have four donation decks. That's what the two D's stand uh, for in the top left hand corner next to the deck names. These are all decks that were viewer submitted. So viewers built these lists that we're going to be playing today. This one is going to be Leona Trundle, but it also has a Braum in here as well. Um, we're going to be combining. We're going to be combining a, a bunch of little things together and seeing how it works out. So you know, like we have our Daybreak cards to be able to help out Leona, but we're not going super hard into the Daybreak. As you can tell, we only have one Robin. It does kind of feel like we should have more Robins instead of these star shapings, but. I, don't know, I guess we'll we'll see. I'm I'm somebody as y'all know is not very big on the star shaping card. I think this is a little overrated, but it's good that we're trying this out because then you know that's that's the thing about viewers made list. You know we'll try out some new stuff, and we'll we'll see if star shaping does overperform Robin. It helps out in our deck because it is a spell for Starlet Seer. We do want to have a good amount of spells for Starlet Seer, and also it will um, be able to get us a celestial card that costs seven or more, which will probably help with Trundle's attack, um, most likely. Hey, what's up, nice, Phil? Uh, let's see. Besides that, so our one Braum is pretty interesting because we can use a um, card like Zenith Blade to be able to pump up a Braum. It's a permanent buff. And, of course, that's also our Daybreak card and give it Overwhelm. Or, of course, we can use that with Trundle as well. Um, then we have Mentor of the Stones in here that gives... Permanent support buff of plus two, plus two, which is awesome with Braum or awesome with just, you know, a bunch of other things. Be able to give that permanent plus two, plus two. And if it dies, we get to create gems. And we also have the Shards of the Mountain that can fill our hands with gems. And all of these gems are permanent plus one, plus zero buffs, which are awesome with Braum for sure. And plus awesome with whatever we give Overwhelm. Also, if we fill our hand with gems... And let's say we cast like, a, you know, six gems, just for example, and we have a Starless here in play, then we're granting the top ally in our deck plus six plus six with all those gems. And maybe then we draw that ally and then we Zenith Blade that ally and give it another plus one plus two and Overwhelm. And that's a way that we can create a huge Overwhelm thing with the help of, of gems, Starless here, Zenith Blade. So you can understand what we have going on here and it does look pretty interesting. All right, so let's play some Leona Trundle. We'll go play five games over in rank, see how we do. Um, after this, we got an Encroaching Shadows Misfortune aggro deck with Callista Misfortune. And then Zed Tarek and Nocturne Sejuani going with Fearsome and Frostbite together with that one. Okay. Cool. Um, cool, yeah, good to know, Nicefield. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Um, the only way I find that it works is if you can summon other creatures that than what you cast normally. What do you mean by that? Like, what do you mean, Nicefield? Like, you get extra units? Is that what you mean? Hey, Shreeb. Okay, we're definitely keeping Starlet Mentor. Um, both of our five drops are pretty awesome. Maybe I don't keep both of them. Guess we'll keep Trundle. No, we can we can mulligan both of them. We don't need them right away, and it's it's better to have the the really good allies in our deck anyway, so that maybe Starlet's here will pump them up. I, I don't know what you're referring to, Asgarda. Alright, we're not attacking into a 3-6. Here go this Mentor of the Stones. Do some support. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. Okay, so you get okay, so units with extra bodies, like petty officer. Okay. 
I got gotcha. you. Um. Celestial power. I think it's probably best just to go to attacks. Instead of me playing Leona first, and then they play Leona and stun something. Targon's history is in each stone and star. The dawn has arrived. Behold the sun's holy light. Um, okay, yeah, that may be the old, old Link. Or no, that's, is that the same Link? Yeah, Mobiletics changed their formatting and everything, so I had to update the Link, so maybe, so yeah. They changed a lot of things. Yeah, these Celestials are so good. Yeah, I had to update the dex uh, link the other day. Hmm. Sunlight guided my brethren. Descends upon them. All right, I guess we're gonna meteor shower. All right, so our Leona is at two. Seven overwhelm. This will be a good winter, oh, an auspicious season. It's a 6-5, not quite getting it up to 7. I wish I could get it up to 7. I mean, Lulu's amazing. Lulu... Um, is the champion I've had the most success with out of, a, out of the new champions. And that card's awesome. So much damage. The trolls are going to war. Our strength is forever at its zenith. Blessed daylight surrounds you. Maybe I'm supposed to give that one to Trundle. Yeah, already we play star shaping. I'd rather this be I'd rather this be the uh Robin, where we'd be able to play Robin, get this to three out of four. It's always day, play another thing. Cause like the ice pillar plus the daybreak doesn't work very well. Admittedly, that does not work very well. I'm gonna make a use 
Circle. <laughs> Hey Muffin, good morning. So Muffin, you wanted I was gonna play yours last year, so you wanted Sejuani, right? Not Ash. You want Sejuani? So give me five gems. These options are amazing. Come on, come on. I don't want to just waste all of my daybreak cards. Okay, yep. So yeah, so that's Okay. Cool. Hopefully we'll we'll have that. That's That's the plan. Next, our ally that we're going to have here is going to be ridiculously large. Just saying, whatever, whatever is going to be on top. We have cast so many spells with these two Starless Seers in play. We're going to have something that's going to be pretty insane. <laughs> What's up, potato? Video goes, hey, I'm awake. That means it's time to watch Hawk. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining. All right. Back, heretic. This is slow. Ugh. I told you it was going to be something big. Oh, plus 20, plus 20. Starlet Seer with gems. <laughs> I think Cabo was like, do you have enough spells for Starlet Seer? I think the answer is yes. To shine like the, sun, you must the problem is we don't have enough Daybreak for Leona. I think that's a problem. The dawn has arrived. May it never leave. Behold the sun's holy light. That's what I'm worried about. This this definitely would have been I think our turn would have been a whole lot better if the star shaping was Robin the previous turn. Um It should still activate the Daybreak effect once, so we should still be able to stun this Destroyer. Um, that's the good news, the bad news. Spell Shield. I guess that's a thing. So I think it only does once. Maybe it'll do twice. Twice would be awesome, but I think it's only going to be once. Darn, it's only once. 
But, you know, I want to play that Daybreak. I mean, it would have been nice to play the 2121, but we want to play that first. Bless the faithful and fear the heretics. Bask in the light's radiance. Mystical levitation requires concentration. I'm gonna play one more. Okay, so basically, you know, the donation decks, they are the viewer submitted decks. I don't I don't like changing them without being told that I can change them. Um But we'll play one more game. I'm I'm <laughs> I wanna change the star shaping to, to Robin, and uh, I'm probably going to after this game. I wish the person was here that donated for it. They told me to play it first today, and so I thought they would be here, but they're not. Not yet. Uh, Alright, so it looks like we're playing a real aggressive deck. I like the one drops. Leona is good. We'll mulligan our five drop to look for something that costs two or three. And there we go with the mentor. Hey, homeowner. Good morning. Yeah, th thank you, Muffin. Yep. Um, yeah, maybe they thought it was a late start. I don't... Um, I think so. I hope not. Alright, so we have the attack token on turn one, which makes playing the Solari Soldier pretty appel appealing with the attack token. Um, but you know, like we do want to get Starlet Seer in play early, so it's like, what are we doing with this Omen Hawk? I have my orders. Um, we see through all. All right, so the pet can hit us twice, but you know, now I need to play the Mentor of the Stones because I need to pump up one of my units so that they can block Precious Pet. Maybe I should have led with Omen Hawk and not the Solari Soldier. If I would have, I would have led with Omen Hawk, then I could have had the Soldier on turn two on defense. That would have been better. Mystical levitation requires concentration. Celestial power. The gem, though, could turn another thing into being able to block Fearsome as well. Timing is everything. Damage comes in. Sunlight That's an easy pick. Take the big life steal thing. Yeah, let's go with the let's go with the Leona. So the Solari Soldier is not Daybreak right now, but I'm probably just gonna play the Solari Soldier to have an, another three three on a defense. We'll kind of see though. 
You know, I'm probably gonna be attacking with the Mentor of the Stones. I don't know. He passed? It's a lot of mana just chilling over there. far as passing goes. We'll see if that ends up being a mistake or not, not getting another fearsome blocker immediately. I will protect you. All right, maybe that's going to be a mistake. Not getting that fearsome blocker. Hmm. Uh, let's see. At five life. Five is not very much. What once was two now is one. I just need this life steal thing in play. So I don't know, it's just all that mana being wasted, it's that's very enticing. I don't think it would have really made a difference if I would have attacked or played the 3-3. I don't think that probably would have made the difference. I think like those with all that noxion fervor and everything, looks like we were just dead. I don't I don't really regret passing, to be honest. I don't think that that not passing would have made any difference. With, with all that reach, the biggest thing, the biggest thing that I that ended up costing me was my turn one playing. That that was where it all went wrong. Was was turn one? How I played, uh, so how I played the Solari Soldier instead of Omen Hawk. Should have played Omen Hawk. I mean, obviously, I didn't know that he just had like a bunch of two one fearsomes, but. In the face of two unfearsomes, I wish I would have gone Omen Hawk on turn one, and then had the the one drop to play on the three three to play on turn two to be able to block a fearsome. Well, this isn't good. We're 0-2, and now we're playing the best deck in the game with Lulu Shen. It's my opinion. Best deck. Need you, Shield Bear. Looks of Iron's pretty nice of turning on the Lunari Priestess. With the Nightfall. That's pretty nice. Their hand does not look to be too good. Moon Silver to be able to use as a zero mana spell with the Keep searching. Uh, with the Starlet Seers, and probably good for star shaping as well. That's perfectly fine with me. card is more of a problem. Clad 
in shining sunlight. I find them unworthy. This is going to be a good winter. I agree, Starless here. We're going to have a good winter. Sure. Basically, three mana single combat. Follow me. I guess I could have played that Moon Silver before that card before that one left. Light. This Shield Breaker would have been a 7 10. Shen is so good. Oh, an auspicious season. Kind of think I take Living Legends. I can set up Living Legends by not playing very much this turn. Strength and grace, beauty in the play. Ooh, that is good. Yeah. An auspicious season. Let's silence that Swiftwing Lancer from doing all its challenging. I don't like all it's challenging. Flavor, it's spice. Yeah, the celestial cards are fleeting, but I'll have 13 mana to play them. So, like, I think, and, like, look at how much room I'll have. I think, like, at worst, I would get a Scourge, right? Like, that's, like, the worst case scenario for this Living Legend, is that Scourge. Right? Like, we're gonna, we're gonna draw, like, seven, seven cards, and we'll have 13 mana. Yeah, it says refill your mana completely, so it refills like all all of it. It fills all of it up. Eat up, friends. Well, don't get too close. I know your true heart. You cannot sway me. All right, maybe I should have protected something with the Elixir of Iron. I wanted to kind of pass priority and see what they did. Yeah, yes, Cabo. I'm, I'm sure that's what the card does. That's what it says right here. Refill your mana. Let's see, so I have 11. Okay, so I can't play Shield Bearer and that, and Living Legends. Oh, it doesn't fill it all the way up. Okay, it's just the mana that you have. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I, I guess I was wrong. I've only played the card with 10 mana, so I guess I was wrong. All right, well, we can obliterate those two enemies. Okay, so I, I guess I, I was wrong. I thought it just refilled all the mana. Um, okay, so... Scourge isn't the worst case scenario. So if I go with the Obliterate 2 enemies, which I think that's probably the best thing to do, we're going to go with the Shield Bearer first. 
give them the opportunity to play another enemy that's not just these two, so because you know I don't really want to obliterate the flower child. Um and you know I could I could still just play the warrior also, I suppose. They're not playing anything else. The fate of mortals and spirits falls to me. Nice to meet you. Really, Trundle? <laughs> Alright. GG's. That Equinox was huge. That was like... That was really important with that game. Uh, getting that Equinox and being able to... Um, silence the, the Swiftwing Lancer. That was really important. Yeah, so I could have gone with the yeah, I could have gone with the warrior and the three three elusive, and then double stun. But then the yeah, the double stun it doesn't really do anything. But I mean, then I still would have the seven six in backup. It's difficult to not double obliterate. It's difficult not to do that. I'm gonna try all this. It's three Daybreak cards for Leona. If I didn't have the Leona, I'd probably be mulliganing the Zenith Blade, but maybe like the Mentor can support one of these things, make it larger, and then the, the Zenith Blade help out. We have not drawn Braum yet. To go along with our gems and stuff like that. All right, well, assuming they have Make It Rain, which is a pretty fair assumption, Mentor the Stones looks a lot worse some time. to play at this point of the game. Because I play Mentor the Stones, they go Make It Rain. All my stuff dies. I play the Zenith Blade, they play Make It Rain. So I basically just don't have a good option. So that's cool. So I guess I just pass. See if they play something else and then I play that. I know I could attack and challenge the powder keg, but I think the better option was just to pass and see if they would play something else. I'm always up for a round or two. Something for all of you. Sunwet. Daylight breaks on the back. I really wish this was Robin again. I'd love to play just a five a five five right now. Into the 
future I see purple. Croak it, you work, burn if you don't. Dang. That means I don't get to attack. Unless I give Omen Hawk plus one plus two an overwhelm and then attack with it. If I don't attack, I can't really block. Well, there's just, it's just a five mana five five. Attack does go wide pretty well. Levitation requires concentration. I'm glad we're trying new cards. Like uh, Mentor the Stones, Star Shaping, Zenith Blade. These are not cards that I've put in any deck so far. Um, I think Mentor of the Stones has been okay. I've, I've been pretty happy with Mentor of the Stones. I liked it with the Starlet Seer too, with all these gems. Like that's pretty sweet. I haven't been very impressed with these two cards. Uh, especially this one. Um, this one, you know, like we we were able to get like that ten mana uh, thing previously. No. Yeah, our star shaping did give us that uh, living legends. That's probably an oversight by me of not casting a gem on the 1-1 one, one first to make it 2 power. Yeah, that, that had to have been an oversight by me. Okay, even trying some star shaping with Heimerdinger. <laughs> yeah. I guess you can win. Get a turret to go along with it. So I played those those gems on the Omen Hawk to heal it up to four health. To be able to get get past these. Or you won't be able to block these. But that's again so I mean I can't I can't say that I've played this perfectly. Should have put an extra gem on the 1-1. I guess I should have gone an extra gem on this Omen Hawk. I thought 
I was just wrong. I thought four was going to heal it, but I needed five to heal it completely. Also, I was doing my math wrong on that. So you need like two, two. Um... The gems do work well with the ice pillar. I've worked out something special. My plan is the star shaping here to gain five life to try to stay alive. Victory awaits. Oh, it looks like that's not going to be enough. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now they're doing ten. I'll go to two. I'm not going to behold a celestial card <clears throat> for this one. Oh, wait. Maybe. Come on, come on. I guess they're at 11. They don't have any direct damage. Oh, no. This thing costs 9. Let's see. No, we're not going to be able to play gems as well. We do have Overwhelm. Okay, yeah, I mean, I guess we, we can kill them if they have absolutely nothing. We can kill them. So, not super likely. direct damage and we lose and that is direct damage all right well I'm, I'm basically I'm frustrated at myself for messing up some with those gems we have one more game we'll play like this <clears throat> A couple of times, though, like, we had star shaping, and I'd much, much, much rather have Robin. I think a, a five mana five five would have been great to play there on turn five to just kind of have a, a nice large body to block and everything. But I still, I messed up, so that's why I'm sorry. I'm kind of a little frustrated myself. All right, let's try this again. So we're playing against uh, Trundle with Braum. The Starlet Seer gem Braum stuff, that does seem pretty cool. But I think that Leona is just too powerful that, that they should probably just go away from Braum and play the third Leona. There's definitely some good stuff going on with this deck. Ours is the one true light. Punish transgressions. I know we're just one in three, but we're we're testing out new cards and all that kind of stuff and seeing new synergies. And we've definitely been seeing some real good synergies in here. Daylight 
Are we taking the Fallen Comet? Because it can be really difficult to get rid of both Braum and Trundle. I want the Fallen Comet to help me out. Another one. First we fight. Have you met my shield? Believe or burn. Have faith. It is easy. So we do have Leona, but the kind of question is, you know, now what? It's not like attacking is very enticing. I think we just kind of sit back on these falling comets. And our Behold the Infinite. That's a wonderful card. That's, I think that's what our deck's missing, is five mana, five fives. Both Robin and Hearthguard are wonderful cards. These are Blessed by snow and stars. Time for talking to them. We should be friends. Hot on the trail. No mercy for heretics. All right, take five. Gosh, I wish this was Robin. Get our other Starless here in play first, and then go Behold. Venture the Stones, you just can't. I guess I could mentor an attack on the Leona. Turn the Leona into, like, five power so they can't challenge Leona and have Braum survive. We do that instead of Behold the Infinite. They block the Mentor of the Stones. That gives me some gems I can use to pump these things up. Stand and defend. This will be a good winter. Are taking living legends over the the slow speed stun too. Like, you know, if we do have the option to play the stun card, which maybe is not real reliable, we have the falling comment. I should talk better about star shaping. Star shaping is about to save my Leona. I don't know, another Living Legends? Do that turn 9 and turn 10. Alright, so then you block here, you block here, you block here. We go to 10.
Transfusion? Alright, we it down. I mean, they, they just played Fury of the North, yes. I mean, I have to block stuff. I can't just die. The other option of not blocking isn't... isn't very good. It is really enticing to fall in combat this Braum, but you no know, living legends. Oh, an auspicious season. I guess I, yeah, I only get four cards because all these gems are in the way. That wasn't as good. So I still can fall in combat. Choose. It's either that or the immortal fire. Okay, so Fallen Comet would cost six mana. So I could have Fallen Comet and Trickster and Messenger or the Immortal Fire. I think I just answered my own question. And obliterate an enemy. This would be a good winter. Okay. That's a good turn. What did we catch? I don't know why I didn't play I had my one mana left. I should have played that Starless here the previous turn. I don't know why I Come wouldn't. So basically we are at um, play Living Legends now or wait. And I think we can wait. It doesn't really seem like we are in any, any hurry to do that. Basically wait until I have more space in hand. Bigger trundle. Um, don't have space for stuff. If I attack, I, mean, I could cast the ice quake, kill a lot of their stuff and not very much of mine. So we're kind of seeing, like, comparing our deck to 
the like a more old school Noxus Freljord. We're seeing the power of Targon. Targon has some just ridiculous power stuff compared to like what what our opponent has. Um, so we're seeing that. Potentially. Right. The signal fires. Potentially this isn't a very good... Like, that's the weird part about playing this proactively like we are. The grant all units minus three, minus zero. What's up, Drew? It's all good. Which one of these am I healing? By snow and stars. We'll heal the vulnerable thing. There's a lot of power in this deck, Drew. I like it. There's just one... One thing I don't really like is the, the five mana spell instead of more Robins. Ooh, Robin is so good. This will be a good Dang, got a bunch of zero mana things. Alright, so our... I also think there's a lot of good stuff going on with this deck, as, we, as I was just kind of talking about throughout the beginning part of that game. Um, I know our record didn't look, you know, doesn't look the best, but it, we're still, we're trying stuff out and we're, we're figuring out our best, uh, you know, numbers to be playing and everything like that. But there is a lot of, a lot of power. I did like the gems with Starlet Seer. That was, that was really interesting. Um, I did like that quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I really don't like star shaping. I know that we were able to get some powerful celestial cards with this, but Leona is... Um, so good. Yeah, that, that last card I just played was, um, that was the 10 mana Celestial card. I don't know if I can see it on here. Where would we, where would we see that? Yeah, it's, it's a card called Living Legends. I don't think, I don't think you can see it in here. As far as I know. Um, yeah, yeah, the losses were pretty close. We had, yeah, we had one one that wasn't so close, but the other two losses were, were definitely really close. Um, I mean, I, I am using that show unowned. Okay, yeah, yeah, you can check Living Legends. It's it's a 10-mana card that says um, re fill your hand with celestial cards and refill your mana. Um, and we, we were able to play that a few times, like the star shaping got us that. Leona is just so good, and, and basically I just don't think we, we didn't really have enough daybreak for Leona, and we didn't we didn't take advantage of how powerful Leona is in this deck well enough. And I think that I just think that Robin is super good, not only with Leona but also just a really good body and also creating a random daybreak card, which that's also good. Like you get a great body, you get to you get card advantage, it just replaces itself with another daybreak card, and then it also helps out all of your other daybreak cards including your champion. I just think this has to be a three of. Um, so I would, I'd recommend playing three of those and no star shaping. I don't know. Maybe star shaping is better than Battle Fury. I don't, I don't really like this Battle Fury. Um, the star shaping was fine. So I would, I would probably play a star shaping over the Battle Fury, actually. We never drew that Battle Fury. That's nothing I, I ever wanted anyway. But I would get the Robin up to three. And I know we never... We never drew Braum, but again, Leona is so good. I think that we ju you just kind of have to play three Leona because of how good that card is. 
Braum's pretty interesting though. I understand wanting to play a Braum with all of these with all these other cards. But I think Leona has to be a three of. So therefore you either ha either need to get rid of the Braum or maybe you just play two Trundle. I think that's also completely reasonable. I think that it'd be better to have three Leona, two Trundle than the other way around, especially with um with the Robin. Um, you know, or you can just get rid of the Braum to play the other Trundle. But but the Braum makes a lot of sense here with with filling the hand with gems and with the mentor of the stones and that kind of stuff. Uh, but that's just a little, just a uh, couple small tweaks I recommend. Um, and and <clears throat> you could probably tell through those games, this was my first time playing gems, because especially the, the game four, um, I think that was the game four, the one against the Bilgewater deck, I, I didn't play the gems perfectly. I... I was too patient on some of the gems and uh, everything. That was just some, that was just kind of a, a learning experience with the gems. But the gems did look pretty strong, especially with Starlet's here, like I was talking about. Love that. I don't like Zenith Blade. Zenith Blade looked pretty bad. I don't like this card. However, I will admit that this card can be quite valuable with um, pump. You know, getting a 2020 with Starlet Seer with all the gems that you can. So I I do understand playing the Zenith Blade. I think that this card would would be better again with more Robins um, and a third Leona. Basically, if you if you have more Robin, more Leona, then it then it does make it more bearable to play Zenith Blade also. So I think that I think that just these changes would help that Zenith Blade be a real card better. No, I liked I like the Braum. I don't I don't really think I'd want to drop Braum in a deck with Mentor of the Stones, um, and uh, the gems with the shards of the mountain, and of course the gems that Mentor of the Stones creates. Because the thing about Braum, Braum's a, a good card, but usually the problem with Braum is that usually you have to spend other cards like Take Heart, for example. You have to put other cards in your deck that aren't that aren't necessarily that good, but you have to spend cards to make Braum like really impactful. If that makes sense, like like you have to play like your pump spell on your Braum to to make it to make it good, and so that if they have a removal spell for your Braum or they have anything that deals with it, you're usually down a Braum and down a pump spell, probably down some tempo, stuff like that. But just having having this mentor the stones that can just support it, where you're not actually spending a card, where you just get to give it the plus two plus two, that's really nice. Or the mentor of the stone dies and you get all these gems, and you're just using these little gems that aren't like really cards. But you're just using some gems to make Braum um, a lot better and, and more impactful with having power. And so that's not, you know, I guess the Shards of the Mountain would be a card, but you're not, you know, each each gem that you use, you can use with the Braum. But it's not like you're you're spending full-on cards on the Braum. Um, and so, yeah, just getting one gem on the Braum, just only one is, is pre-nerfed Braum. Yeah, you're right. But Mentor the Stones supporting Braum and permanent plus two plus two like this like those two together that's pretty awesome like that's that's like basically casting take heart on Braum like that's casting a three you know mentor of the stone support is basically like take heart which is you know a three mana spell that you get on the Braum and then you get all those gems and things like that so I while we didn't have Braum I wouldn't necessarily think that we'd want to take out Braum I I liked that I wonder if I under I honestly wonder if like this should just shouldn't even be a Trundle deck. If Trundle just isn't necessary and it should just be Braum Leona and just focus on on that with Braum and Leona and then all these daybreak cards and, and you can have your star shapings and stuff like that for like a top end. Wanna have like more star shaping or Lunari Priestess. I wonder what, I honestly wonder if that would be better with, you know, Starlet Seer with all that. Now, of course the Trundle does have that ability to get overwhelm and then it's pretty Silly with Overwhelm. Um, but that's also a possibility. Because then you can have your... You just have, with more Brahms, the better chances of Omen Hawk, Starlet Seer, um, growing your Brahm and a better chance of Mentor the Stones into Brahm and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I, I like Brahm a lot. We you know we never drew Brahm. Like we basically, we didn't have Brahm and Ravin ever and i think that that could have made a, a difference that those could be like some good cards that were curving out on turn four braum turn five robin that kind of stuff 
And then, yeah, you can you can have the Zenith Blade give Braum Overwhelm. So I think kind of moving forward, maybe that would be the thing to do is move away from Trundle and focus more on Leona and Braum, even though I know our deck was called Leona Trundle and stuff. Um, but interesting stuff. Definitely some very powerful things going on and a lot of potential with this kind of archetype. Um, but yeah, I... I <laughs> Scar asked, new Starlet Braum soon? Yeah, I, I was really impressed with Starlet Seer with gems. And of course, Braum with gems is awesome. Um, so yeah, I think I'll, I'll probably put together a star, you know, kind of put together like this kind of deck with just focused on Braum Leona soon. And we'll try that version out in the coming days as well. All right. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Hopefully y'all learned a lot with this video. That's what it's all about. When we got these new cards, we got to be learning, got to be improving and everything like that. Finding the, um, you know, the different things that other people aren't doing and and uh finding some strength with these new cards you know and we learned a lot all right um but anyway uh thank you so much for watching some leona trundle and i'll see you for the next video